tuning in. Thank you for being on Tough Team. You are a creative designer on the team and you helped build it. So um, you were the first um, the first hire onto the creative team. Um, so what was like, what's been the most rewarding and also the most challenging part of taking a nugget of an idea and turning it into something that's really big and awesome? Yeah, great question. So I would say the most rewarding aspect for me um, is being a part of Tough. It's a special since it is a small team and having that opportunity to lay the groundwork for our internal process while having the freedom to pivot and constantly involve the process and testing out what works. Um, just looking back at where we were six months ago when I started to where we are now is very rewarding in what we accomplished in such a short amount of time. And I'd say at the same time, it's a challenge since we're constantly evolving and growing our creative team. What used to work six months ago no longer works now. <laughs> and it's not probably going to work four to six months down the road. I would speak, continue to hire more creatives and expand our team. Yeah, totally. That's Yeah, that is a, a really fun part. Um, kind of related question. There are many different types of design out there, many different like agencies. Why creative design within a growth marketing agency? That's, that's a good question. I think creative, depending where you are, might get overlooked, but I think for marketing and a growth agency, it's a huge component. Um, since the creative team was added, it overlaps with every other service that we have at Tough. And it's really been a huge asset in our growth as a company and just where we're going to, um, but the trajectory of where we're going. Um, so I, yeah. Yeah. That's I don't so know how true. to answer that. No, that's, it's so <laughs> true. I think that it's cool to see, um, you know, there are a lot of organizations that make creative so that they can have something to to play in a campaign and it's cool to be doing like the strategy behind the campaign and the strategy behind the creative so they they work together and just generate much better results i think that that's something that's super cool about creative within a growth agency um okay podcasts um one thing i've like almost every designer that i've worked with i do, i love that like a designer has the ability to design and also listen like as a writer it's really hard to write words and listen so I always love asking designers about podcasts what's your favorite of the moment and what's one um that just continues to be a winner and stand the test of time yeah so I do love my podcasts I listen to them frequently while I'm designing and working on a lot of different stuff at Tough. Um, I'd say my all-time favorite is a podcast called New Layer, and it's with a couple designers, their product designers, um, primarily Tanner Christensen and Jasmine Friedel. Um, so they have a lot of episodes that are more geared towards product design, but um, they cover a, a lot more across design careers in general. They talk about different design tools um, different education pathways to get to um, design careers. And they also have episodes on design critiques. I'd still recommend them to non-designers as well, just because they have a lot of other um, career-related content that's very thought-provoking. One that I remember listening to back in February last year of 2020 was um, related to developing personal values. And I thought mm. that was really important at the time when I was beginning to go through the interview process, looking for a new career and really defining what I valued moving forward. So I'd still recommend that to designers as well as non-designers. That sounds really interesting. I'll have to go take a look at that. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's fun to enter a job hunt having that in your back pocket and using that as a guide. Mm -hmm, definitely. Yeah. Um, back to design. <clears throat> One of your coworkers said this about you. Megan is an absolute creative legend when it comes to her work. 
I never feel like I've seen the same thing twice and she's constantly improving her designs to try out something new. What is your strategy for constantly improving and where do you find like the zest and energy to always be trying something new? Well, first of all, whoever said that is very kind. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. Um, I think for me personally, it's really important um, just to pay attention with a lot of creative and like advertising as I'm scrolling on social accounts. Um, just pay attention to the content that is on there to constantly be inspired. Um, something that's really important to me too is to follow designers that I listen to on podcasts or that consistently post on LinkedIn, follow them on socials, keep up with them, see what they're doing. Um, there's a couple um, also that have started YouTube channels. That's really popular. So constantly like keeping up on the content that they're producing, um, seeing what tools they're talking about or new trends. Um, I think that's really important for me just to continue to seek inspiration. But I think also just taking a step back and seeing what's in my 3D environment. So mm -hmm. as I you know, am out running errands or traveling, paying attention to, you know, maybe it's like a, a print on a piece of paper, or I was looking at an envelope this morning that had a cool pattern mm. on the inside. And um, maybe I'm in inspired by like textures on fabric. So I think paying attention to the environment that I'm in also um, sparks inspiration. That's cool. It kind of, uh, when you look at things through the lens of a designer, it makes everything in your world kind of take on a different sort of flavor. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I um, used to do interior design. So I think that's mm -hmm. really cool to take that 3D environment and that the way that design was interpreted and be inspired to transition that into a digital space mm -hmm. as well. Oh, that's really cool to think about. I like mm -hmm. that. Um, well, you live on the outskirts of Portland, Oregon, and as we're recording this, it's kind of gloomy, but it's a Friday. Um, what's your favorite thing to do around Portland, and what's your favorite thing to do on a, on a fun, um, weather-permitting weekend? <laughs> yeah, um, great question. I think when it is sunny, maybe in the spring, summertime, it's always fun to take a road trip to the Oregon coast. Mm -hmm. um, nice to get away and kind of relax and chill out for a bit. Um, but while I'm here on the outskirts of Portland, I do like to frequent um, trying new restaurants. There's a local tap house that I like to go to on the weekend, um, meet up with friends. Um, and recently, I would say within the past four months, I got back into reading for fun again. So I definitely look forward to taking the weekend to read a good book and just relax by the wood burning fireplace that I am so lucky to have. That's really nice when it is cold and you can't go outside when it is rainy in Portland. <laughs> so I'd say that is um, what I like to do on my weekends. Sounds extremely mm -hmm. Pacific Northwest to me. <laughs> yeah, most definitely, especially with the nine months of rain that we get here. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, well, Megan, thank you so much for being on Tough Teams. And um, we'll look forward to uh, learning more about you later. Thanks so much, Ellie.